Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for tuning into this video today. This is a series of videos called Wow or Wisdom on Wednesdays. And I do a new one every Wednesday. And you can check the playlist, which I will have at the end of this video or in the description of this video to see the other videos because there's quite a lot of videos. It's like a free spiritual public library for you to check out any type of topic you would like. Today, we're going to be talking about, you know, honestly, I'm channeling this and it's 60% spirit guides, but still 40% of Susan and she's pretty spicy sometimes. So I'm just calling them crappy souls. <laughs> Today, this video is about crappy souls. Okay, now what is a crappy soul? Well, from my very judgmental perspective of my human 40% that I'm hanging on to in this in this collaboration with my spirit guides, it would be people that do bad things, right? So I have a video called Killer Souls. That's a whole different thing, a very, very, very different thing. And when I did that video, you guys were like, what about people that are not as bad? What happens to them? And why do they come here? So that's what this video is going to cover. I am not going to be talking about I'm going to try not to use anybody's names. I'm just going to try to use generalities, but you get, you'll get the drift, okay? We are on this planet Earth. It is a dualistic planet, meaning it is not even. It is not an even, evenly distributed, energetic planet. It's always going to be in flux. It's never going to be balanced. It's not a balanced place, okay? So to have that happen, well, we need some energy that's lower and some energy that's higher. And we need some high energy to go low and some low energy to go high. Basically, we're living a Shakespearean play or maybe something written, you know, by some really cool Hollywood movie producer where you're engrossed in the movie and you're rooting for this person only to find out that they are an SOB. And you're like, Oh my God, you know, right? That makes a good movie, doesn't it? Doesn't it make a good movie when you're tricked, when you're surprised? The twist, what do they call it? A plot twist. Well, Earth is nothing but one big plot twist. The people you thought you could trust, you can't. The people you thought you couldn't trust sometimes come through for you. And it's all very confusing, right? So when we talk about crappy souls, I'm going to talk about... <laughs> I got to stop calling them this because it's kind of making my energy with my spirit guides discordant. <laughs> so they can only take so much spicy Susan before they shut me down. But anyway, so we need a person to come to this earth and be the SOB, to be the narcissist, to be the bad boss, to maybe even be someone who's abusive, to be someone who is um, the thief to be the bad leader, to uh, take away people's rights. How will we ever learn that we appreciate those rights if they're never taken away? Get it? How will I ever know that I should stand up for myself if no one ever challenges that? If no one ever comes into my life that gaslights me and I'm like, wait, what? You know, that's a challenge. That's a lesson. That's an opportunity, really. I mean, they don't really, lessons, again, have this connotation of like a judgment and they would call it an opportunity. It's an opportunity for your soul, for your human, your human, <laughs> They, I swear to God, you guys are calling it an operating system. I swear to God, your human operating system to decide if that person who might be a parent it might be a lover. It might be a child. It might be a boss. It might, so in other words, it might be somebody that you have a connection to, that, you, that you've bought into. You know, you've bought into this person and now they're gaslighting you. You know, maybe they were love bombing you and now they're gaslighting you, which is all things narcissists do. And now you're like, wait, what just happened? That's the point where you can say, huh, I really value and love myself, and this is out of alignment with that. Therefore, I'm going to put this person, I'm going to get a little bit of a distance from this person. Or 
oh my God, I've made this person upset with me. I'm going to give them more, more control of me. I'm going to give them more of my love and attention to win them back. That's the trap. That's the, the trap has been sprung and you are now hooked and they're reeling you in, which is no judgment here because that's an opportunity. How are you going to know what it's like to be hooked and reeled in by a narcissist if you're never hooked and reeled in by a narcissist? That's what makes you an expert soul. That's when you get to the other side and you're like, you know, Rocky. You know what I mean? Like you are an expert soul because you experienced a lot of things on this planet. And that's what you came here to do. You didn't come here like I wanted to do <laughs> and live in a cave. <laughs> and they said, no, you cannot live in a cave. <laughs> I was like, I think I made a mistake. I, I, my, you know, my, the tour, you know, the, I always see like a tour, like this is bad Disneyland or like, this is like a, you know, I mean, it really is a, it's a challenging place. And I always like pull out the advertisement thing and I'm like, this doesn't look anything like I signed up for, <laughs> you know what I mean? So what happens to crappy souls? Well, they come here to be crappy. They come here to play a role in your life. They come here to be the challenge. If you watch a lot of near-death experiencers who are fantastic to watch because those people crossed over, met their soul family, met these people that they designed this life with, and then came back to this life. And some of them have memories I don't know why this is not focusing. And some of them have memories about what happened. And they can say, I, I crossed over and I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny that I would come back into my broken body after that accident. And I was really mad after I came back into my body for three years because I remember talking to these you know, beings or uh, people, whatever, and saying, yeah, ha ha, I'm really going to have a hard time learning to walk again. Well, that's really hard to square as a human, right? That's hard to come back and say, why? Why? You know, that's the human cry of existence is why? Why, why, why? Well, we're going to talk a bit, little bit about that with this crappy soul thing. So we came here to experience. We came here to learn to grow, to expand our soul. And it is true. When a human leaves this planet and they cross over, if they want to not come back to this planet, which is up to you, and they want to go to another existence, they can't just go to any existence. You want to know why? Because our souls are bigger. Our energy is bigger. It can't just fit into another container. If you think about planets have vibrational restrictions, you know, let's just say Saturn, for instance, Saturn would have a vibrational restriction. Honey, if you a size 14, you ain't going to fit in a size eight. I don't care how hard you try. This is what I'm saying. When we come out of America, we XXL. When we come out of the United States, we are XXL. We're not just going to fit on any planetary existence. We have expanded, okay? And that's because crappy souls helped us expand. Now, I'm going to just keep calling them crappy souls I, I, because sometimes it's very rarely that I get to irritate them. Anyway, so here's the, here's the caveat because this is an important thing. And this, and this explains how we get from a crappy soul to a dark soul, not a killer soul. And, and dark souls can be killers. This is also very confusing. But that video that I did, it's called Killer Souls. But it's really about the very, very few souls that just can't come back. Like very few. It's a very forgiving, loving place, okay? Um, and they help you retool. They help you, you know, fix yourself. You know, they fix yourself. They, you know, your slip is showing, <laughs> you know, fix yourself. So anyway, crappy souls go from crappy to dark when they enjoy it too much. Okay. So let's say you're a crappy soul. 
and you're supposed to come down here and you're supposed to be an SOB or a, a, a narcissist, a female, male, doesn't matter. You're supposed to be the worst planet, the worst parent on the planet or a terrible boss or a stingy, mean person. Okay, now you're like, why? Well, I already told you about the movie. But anyway, let's just imagine there's this stingy, mean person who's just incredibly stingy and mean. And let's say that stingy, mean person has alienated their family. Their family's like, no, we're not dealing with you anymore. And let's say that they have a lot of money because they're stingy and they're mean. And let's say they're able to hire help as they get older and they're able to hire professional medical assistants, nurses, physical therapists, whatever. And let's say they have a hard time because nobody wants to work for them, no matter how much they pay, because they're really mean. Well, is that part of their soul path? Perhaps. Actually, really and truly, perhaps. Because there's always, because until we die, this is what the spirit guides always say, until we die, there's always hope. There's always an opportunity for growth. There's always an opportunity to learn something. There's always opportunity to feel love until the day we, our last breath, not the day, our last breath, there's always hope. So this crotchety old person gets all the way to their last days or their last weeks, or who knows, maybe even their last year. We don't know. And finally, one person is able to stand up to them and say, I need this job, so I'm going to keep working for you, but you're an SOB and you shouldn't be treating people like this. Where do you get off treating people like this? Who do you think you are? Maybe this person is the only person, the only person that's ever said this to this guy or this woman because everybody else has been too afraid. But this person said it and they were saying, you know, fire me if you want, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you a mirror of yourself. You're, they're just going to unload, right? And maybe this person who's doing the unloading has had a lifetime of stingy, mean people to make them stand up for themselves. And it just so happens to be this crotchety old person that they're not related to, that they could care less about. And maybe that's part of the reason why they can't stand up to them. So at that moment, there's a potential that the person doing the offloading of saying what's really on their mind, born of all the years of frustration and SOBs that they've had to put up with. Now they're getting a healing because they got it off their chest. And there's an opportunity and potential that this crotchety old person could also break down and say, my God, you're right. I've lost everything. I've lost my family. I've lost my friends. I lost my coworkers, my business partners. I've lost it all. You're right. There's an opportunity. Maybe it's on the last day of this person's life. Maybe it's on in the last year, last breath. It doesn't matter. It does not matter if it takes your whole life to learn the lesson. That's why we have crappy souls. That is a crappy soul. That is a soul that perhaps has a really bad job, that has a brave job to come down here and stir up angst and ire and pain and misery. Now, that's a sanctioned job. That is, here is your job, go forth and prosper. Now, where does that crappy soul become a dark soul is when they start to enjoy it. When you're the crappy soul, and I'm I'm starting to feel bad saying that, but anyway, when you're the the crotchety, the horrible soul, which is all the same word for crappy, if you ask me. But anyway, when you're that soul, you're not aware that you're an SOB. Or you're an SOB because somebody screwed you when you were a kid. Or somebody screwed you at some, so you're an SOB because the world was hard, right? You're feeling justified and vilified in your SOB-ness. 
it's coming from a place of woundedness. It's coming from a place of hurt, uh, of, of real, real emotion. Now, the difference between that and a dark soul is the dark soul starts to enjoy inflicting pain. Doesn't in, inflict pain because of their hurtness, but because they want to. So let's take a second and look at people in your own life. Which ones are inflicting pain on other people because they're broken? I'm not giving them a pass. I'm not saying you should, you should put up with their pain. And you should not save them because they're doing their soul work. You can't save them. You cannot save them. In the example the spirit guides used, this person said, you're a blah dee blah dee blah 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 and here's some more. That wasn't trying to save them. <laughs> that was expressing their own anger, their own power. I am worthy, therefore I'm not taking your BS. Right? That's not trying to save anybody. That's standing in their power. They stood in their power and in that way, they don't care if that person hears them or changes. They don't care. They're simply saying what they have to say to be in, in, in alignment with their own God like, with their own God love, with their own love for themselves. They're not trying to save nobody. Now, if you continue to yell at them and expect a change, then you're trying to save them. You're trying to change them. That's wrong. Take care of yourself. Stay in your own God light. And then peace out. Once you do that, it's on them to decide, have I fulfilled my role? Have I done a good job as the crappy soul? Did I cause enough pain to get this person to stand up for themselves? They may never come to that conclusion in this lifetime. And that is not a failure. That is not a failure because their job is harder in some ways than even everybody else's job. So when they cross over, they get care. They get healing. They get love. Because that breaks you. Being, being a, a less than love in a, in a soul, in a human body, is very damaging to the soul. Therefore, believe it or not, they're telling me only expert, or not expert, but only souls that have a lot of experience generally get to play that role. Now, that's a sanctioned job here on planet Earth. Now, if you get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm loving this. Watch, watch this. Watch me inflict pain there. Watch me inflict pain there. Watch me enjoy. I'm going to enjoy it. No, that's a dark soul. You have taken your position of being a crappy soul and you've fallen into the energy of enjoying it. Okay. Uh, you know, when I did the killer soul video, a lot of people wrote back and they said, what about soldiers? Well, soldiers go into war, unfortunately, having to protect themselves. If somebody's shooting at you, you're going to shoot back. If you feel like your life is at risk, you're going to do whatever you can to protect yourself. That is the line. They go from being a soldier to being a dark soul when they enjoy it, when they go over the line. There are laws in the military. There are lines that we say you should not cross. When you cross that line, you've gone to the dark side. What happens when you go to the dark side? Well, you go into, if you watch the killer soul thing, it's kind of similar, but not nearly as, you know, serious. You go into a different place that might be something along the lines of what Christian religion or some religions call purgatory, where you're in a timeout. So let's say you cross over as a, as a crappy soul where you're going to get a lot of love and healing and love and healing and love and healing. I mean, you're going to be out of commission. 
you're not going to just typically there's always there's always a caveat every time i say something that sounds like you know 100% they're always send me a caveat typically you don't come right back into a body typically you need a lot of love and light but there there is some free will here again there's still free will at every turn free will until you become a dark soul once you become a dark soul you don't have the, your free will is now it's sort of like um well i mean they showed me like prison but i mean i think it's it's purgatory you don't have free will we cannot allow you to operate outside of the bounds of our universal law there's laws everywhere so there's universal law meaning galactic universal law so you cannot operate outside of the bounds of that so in that case you're going to be required you're, you're captured i mean it really is sort of like a, a prison or a purgatory you don't have free will you're going to be sequestered into some sort of energetic confinement where there will be an assessment there will be an assessment of your soul um, and, and if you watch the killer soul, that's a brilliant video. Actually, I don't know. People aren't watching it as much because who wants to learn about killer souls, but it was fascinating to me how they re, how they re, uh, how they saved. I don't know what else to say. I can't, the word isn't there. Um, uh, how they remodeled or re, uh, fixed this soul. Not every soul, but a soul that is a dark soul or even order of magnitude worse, a killer soul would go to an existence where the vibrational free will is less. We just told you if, if a soul leaves the earth, it's bigger and it doesn't just get to go to any existence because it wouldn't fit. The same thing with a dark soul it's going to go to a smaller existence. It's actually going to go to an existence with a lot of guardrails, which as you might imagine, could be painful for that soul because that soul is going to be a big energy coming out of its existence on earth. And it's going to go into a small existence. So, you know, you can see themes here in a sense of how Christians would describe hell, right? Like, um, you know what I mean? Like a painful existence because you're big and you're going into a small existence. Well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's meant to cause, I don't know how to describe what I'm seeing. It's meant to get, it's meant to change the soul's energy, reshape the soul, redefine the soul. So that's the difference between a crappy soul and a dark soul. Crappy souls are needed. We need them. If we don't have the cop that does police brutality, how are we going to know that we care enough about the people, be they minority or gay or whatever, or religious persecution, how are we going to know that, uh, that people care enough to stand with those people against that crappy soul. This is our growth. There, these things are allowing us to grow. So we learn that, do we want to protect this? Do we care about it? Do we care enough about it? And as we learn these things, we start to learn, oh my gosh, I care about people who don't look like me. I care about people who worship a different way than I do. I care about people who live in a different culture than I do. I, I care about them. I want to help them. We wouldn't know that if we never had some sort of crappy soul to get in there and be the disruptor. They're disruptors. They're teachers. They're our teachers, you guys. Surprising, huh? 
But I want you to just take this away from this video. Look around and the people who are acting horrible out of a sense of brokenness are different than the people who are acting horrible out of a sense of they get off to it. Neither one of them should you should you be any way, shape, or form involved with unless you want to learn that lesson. It's all about lessons. You're trying to get love from them. You're trying to get respect from them. And they are not going to give it to you. You got to get it from here, folks. The lesson is, when we love ourselves, when we love ourselves, we can then recognize the humanity in everybody else. And we can see clearly, this person's just like me. I love them. We look different. We talk different. We worship different, whatever it is. But they're human. I, I recognize that. I recognize their humanity. I'm going to stand up for them. They're going to stand up for me. And in that way, we teach this crappy soul, leader, whoever it is, their lesson. We're not buying what you have to sell. You can either learn that lesson yourself or check out, not learn it. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care about that. We're not caring about that. We're caring about ourselves, our humanity. And finding our humanity and other humanity coming together, centered around one thing, and that is love. So you guys, that's why we have crappy souls. There are teachers. But just like teachers, they come for that one grade. They come for that one lesson. We don't keep the same teacher our whole lives. Let them go. Learn the lesson and let them go. Move on. Release, move on, okay? Of course, we have good teachers too. We have beautiful teachers. We have happy teachers. We have teachers that help us so much. We move on from those too, don't we? Generally speaking, faster than we move on from the bad ones. Okay? Here's to teachers everywhere, and here's to self-love. Take really, really good care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I really appreciate that. If you're new here, subscribe, hit the like button on your way out. Don't forget your jacket, sweater, whatever you came in here with, and I'll see you again next time on Wednesday.